Andy Gress joins us now as we talk about week 18. We talk about it for the first time. Players are going to play it for it in the first time. There's your big side. Oh, my God. This feels like the <laughs> longest season ever, doesn't it? Before we get into the game, mental fatigue, physical fatigue for these guys. Yep. I mean, it's a long time playing ball. Yeah, if, if we're a bunch of rubes who are like, oh, my God, we got to cover this team and blah, blah, blah. And I, Imagine what the players are going through. And Mac Jones even kind of admitted in his press conference that, yeah, it's been a grind. And you can understand it, especially for a guy like Mac, where there's like 13 games in the SEC with a championship game thrown in there. And then there's going against great teams every week. And even though Jacksonville isn't very good, there ain't nobody in the SEC that could have beat Jacksonville, even Alabama this year. So for a lot of these guys, it is really the first time crossing the threshold, so to speak. Younger players who have sort of hit you know, uh, gone through a long stretch here mm -hmm. in their first season. Older guys whose bodies maybe can't hang up. Or a guy like Matt Judon who said he's just trying to get his legs back under him after a little bit of a bout with COVID. Any pitch counts maybe this week, knowing the Patriots are in, they still have stuff to play for, but maybe do you sort of look, look at it like it's that? It's interesting that you said pitch count because to me, it's like the NBA. It's load management where, okay, I want Lawrence Guy to play, but I'm only going to play him 20 plays. If I'm going to play Damian Harris, I'm only going to give him 10 carries. I definitely think load management is a big part of what goes into Sunday's game. Now, Saturday is also telling as well because if the Chiefs lose, then at least you know going into Sunday, you got a chance at the number Number one seed so it's uh, you know the the dirt farmer that dangles the carrot in front of the donkey as Seinfeld once said yeah. but if that's a way and that's just the division it'll be really interesting to see how Bill Belichick handles the load management for a lot of the important guys they need to win in the playoffs yeah second half against the Jags uh, some guys admitted that there were rotations there in the second oh, half to yeah. keep guys fresh we could have played we could have played exactly your keys to a win for the Patriots to end the season 11 and 6 gotta handle the blitz and the one thing Brian Flores isn't afraid to do is to blitz anybody he blitz Tom Brady he'll blitz Mac Jones Number two is, and you kind of mentioned it, it's sort of managing the elements, right? It's going to be hot. Guys are going to be dehydrated. There are players you're going to want to rest. So managing the 46 game day roster is actually going to be key. And don't let Tua Tonga Vailoa get any confidence. He's not been very good this year. It feels like he's kind of plateaued a little bit, Maury. But don't let him be the guy to go out and throw for 303 touchdowns and make it a miserable day. Yeah, he was good on the scripted drives, the ones at the beginning of the game out of the halftime in that you first meeting. Uh, but after that, he hasn't really adjusted on the fly that well mid-game. Um, if the Patriots do, and like we all expect them to, 11-6, and six, is that a successful season before the playoffs, before any wins, before anything else down the line? Hard, hard to think anything otherwise. I mean, 11 wins with a rookie quarterback in a year where you went 7-9, and nine, where a lot of people said, hey, that guy Belichick coached his tail off last year, given what happened to QB. Yeah, it, it, I'm not going to say house money, but it definitely feels like a massive step forward because not only do you win 11 games, you found your guy. Other teams all around are going to be looking for their guy. We got it in Mac. Yeah, and it was a strong QB class last year. Not so strong nope. this year. Not as deep, at least. Um, all right, last thing for you, Gresh. Which team do you think the Patriots should want to face come the playoffs? They'll tell you that they'll go face anybody, anywhere, anytime. Who do you think they match up best? Oh, with? I want Cincinnati bad okay. because I think with J.C. Jackson, you have a number one corner to be able to match up against Jamar Chase. We know this defense has played well against all different kinds of quarterbacks. I want one with little experience in the playoffs or none, which is Joe Burrow and a first-time head coach. Give me the virgin coach every time <laughs> against Bill Belichick. Yeah, that would be juicy. On to Cincinnati. That would be great. That would be good, right? right? On Miami to Cincinnati. It would be a lot of fun. Exactly. I'm sure Hoodsworth would be uh, grinning all chortling <laughs> through that one. <laughs> he would. He's Andy Grest, our New England Nation analyst. You catch him Sunday mornings, 1130, on New England Nation on Fox Providence. That's it for the talk. To preview Week 18 between the Patriots and the Dolphins, we'll be right back on the Sports Wrap.